Hey, this is Andrew Bukowski with Muscle Insider. We're back again talking more Olympia. We're uh, doing men's own bodybuilding. Once again, we've got Bob Chicarola, the voice of bodybuilding, and our Hall of Famer, Sean Ray. How are you guys doing? Good. Now we're talking my language. Now we're That's talking. Right. We, uh, we are at DEF CON 4, guys. The Olympia is literally a week away. Yeah. I remember, oh, it used man, to be on my birthday so in September. Yeah. Are we still celebrating your birthday? No, no. Ye oh. Yesterday was the last day. It was September 30th. So after oh, – well, it's October 1st now. But I remember – Thank Olympia God. Originally, the original, it originally started, Bob, when you were – I don't even think you were born yet. Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn, 1995. I was one month old. I think it was in October. Um, yeah, I, was, I wasn't even around yet, bro. Yeah, you, you went around. But I was – I think I was about two weeks old. But it's moved from September – we went to October. It moved yeah. as far as De November. It went all the way to December recently. And yeah. now we find ourselves uh, smack dab in the middle of uh, October, still on the strip at Resorts World. So should be interesting. Yeah. It hasn't been a full year since the last Olympia. It's been uh, 10 months. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So yeah. it could affect some of the guys. Well, the one guy, uh, we, we could jump right in, though, because we got a whole bunch of stuff to cover. But the guy who might be most affected uh, has made the news this past week, and that, of course, was Samson Dauda, who decided to jump into a show over in France in the last second. Everybody thought, that's crazy, and he's going to ruin it. And uh, and now people have, like, written him off, or they, they think he's dead on. But, uh, Sean, we got a chance to talk about this a little bit last week. In anybody else's circumstances, I would have thought this was a bad move. But I got to be honest, for Samson, I think this is probably a very good move to A, get his shit together, B, get that skin a little bit thinner, and he's got two weeks to clean it up. I thought he looked pretty damn good, but he's, yes, he's holding a lot of water, but you should be holding a lot of water when you're two weeks out. Yeah, uh, 100%. Yeah. He, he would have looked like that, but he would have been sitting on his couch watching it on the Instagram or something. But I thought he should have went to Italy as well and battled out with Hunter. Um, yep. I think because, uh, you know, he's not a Dexter Jackson, but these trips in these other countries, it's an hour away. Like literally he could fly in and fly out. Um, smart move. Samson was not going to be challenged at this show. Giving that paycheck to someone else wouldn't have made any practical sense. He's still going to be a top three finalist at the Olympia, no matter what happens at the Olympia. So this show was just a tune up. This was really good for him to get out there and pose, uh, familiarize himself with, what he needs to do on that stage with a live audience, uh, put that money in the bank and remind himself that this is just a glorified warm up guest posing. I've done it close to the Olympia. I think a lot of guys have uh, in the past, but this is a European show. And mind you, one hour, you can be yeah. in Germany, you can be in Sweden, you can be in Norway, you can be in Italy, you can be in France. I mean, it's not that it's, it's not really that big of a deal. And he, he run it, won it running away. I don't know the guy that got second, but he wasn't close. Um, that being yeah. said, I think what I saw here was exactly what I was expecting to see, even even though there was a small film. That's not the Olympia stage lighting. The lighting changes all the time, but Samson has been doing the business of bodybuilding, and you could tell that by the pictures that he posted prior to this. This was no surprise to me. I, I didn't expect him to look like Mr. Olympia at this competition. You know, I got to feel bad for Andrea Presti at this point, my, my Italian brother from another mother. This poor guy, right, he's got two shows lined up. One's in Italy in his backyard, and, and Hunter Labrada jumps in there, and he gets beat. <laughs> and, and then he figures, well, I still got France. And then Samson jumps in, and he gets beat. So this poor kid can't catch a break. As impressive as he uh, or the third-place guy was, they were no match for Samson. You can see he's in a whole different league at the – I, I get to remind the amateurs out there. When I say amateurs, I'm talking about the, the fan base who, who hasn't been around that long or they don't know any better. When you're 300 pounds, plus pounds, you're going to be holding a lot of water, okay? The big guys don't get in shape like the small guys do. Smaller guys hold a lot less water. They're in much better shape further out. You're not going to get that from a Samson or an Andrew Jack or any of these monsters that are out there. So, guys, take it easy. Don't worry about it. Samson's going to be just fine, and I'm with Sean. He will absolutely be battling up in that three, four, five. So that let's just call it the top five. No way about it. Yeah. No, having seen what you saw in France, do you think there's any chance that he can take the title, or he's still got a ways to go? I do. I think. I think on any given Sunday, this guy's a, a contender. Um, and again, he's not. 
something that we can compare apples to apples with these other two five foot six, five foot seven bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. they're, they're as different as myself and Dorian Yates were. Uh, you're dealing with a 300 pounder and a couple, you know, I don't want to call them midgets, but vertically challenged guys like myself <laughs> um, that are pushing, you know, the 240, 240 range. Um, Samson has and has always had the right stuff. The, the, the question is timing. Again, there's been other great bodybuilders like himself that that timing just never uh, materialized on the big stage and it didn't go their way. Listen, Kevin Lavroni is a four time Olympia runner up. Flex Wheeler is a three time Olympia runner up. There's these guys have how many Arnold classic titles between them without Mr. Olympia standing next to him on the stage. So yeah. you can have all the right stuff, but if you don't nail it on the day, we're just talking about, you know, possibility. Samson has the right stuff. It's up to him to take these two shorter bodybuilders out and put them in his review and change the look of bodybuilding. But he's also going to have to go through Andrew Jack, which off, which he's the X factor. Andrew Jack yeah. is, he's put himself in the conversation, but Samson definitely has what it takes to beat these two smaller bodybuilders. There's no question in my mind. Yeah. I think Andrew's problem is going to be his lower extremities. I think the hamstrings and the calves are going to get exploited standing next to Samson and Samson Again, it's just going to be one of those conditioning things because Hottie brings something from the front that uh, very few bodybuilders do, and Derek brings something from the back that Hottie doesn't bring. So Samson's that other guy, that that guy that your eye is going to be drawn to just because of his size. Oh, yeah. But the conditioning is what's going to make him or break him. And I don't well, think Paris, I don't think Paris hurt him at all. This, no, I don't think so either, Sean. I think it, I think honestly, it's a good move. And maybe if it listen, if it rings out that last little bit of fat, you know, that visceral fat between the skin and and, and the muscle, it's only going to help Samson. But I don't think it's going to hurt him. And I'm right with you. Andrew Jack is the wild card here. This guy made such improvements this past year. And those pictures and video we just saw, this guy has made improvements, and he's made major improvements. He came in a lot fuller, yeah. but he's got that same problem. He doesn't get that real, real thin skin either. And uh, but I tell you what, when you look at this physique that you're looking at right now, that's a Mr. Olympia physique right there. This guy is huge. He's got a small waist, for, especially for a big man. Uh, he's not really missing nothing. Yeah, he can be filled out a little bit here and there. But you know what? That's an impressive looking shot right there. If him and Samson can tag team together and come in at their all time best conditioning, that sets them apart from Derek and Hottie, who are very similar in their height, structure, muscularity and their conditioning, uh, you might you might see a tag team match you haven't seen in some years at the Olympia where you got, it's basically Hottie and Derek versus uh, Samson and Andrew Jett. Yeah, and that, yeah. that can really upset that apple cart where all eyes are on the defending champ and the, and the former champ, and you have these two Nigerians come in here and just upset that apple cart, which is not an impossibility based on how they're looking this year. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I think that was a, an in Really smart move for Samson to do the French show. Um, it looked like, you know, he had a bit of room, but I think he gave just enough that he needed to win that show and kept a little in the tank to ride out those last two weeks to to make it to the Olympia stage. So, I don't know. I, I'd love to see him come on that Olympia stage just peeled. Well, that's exactly well, what Andrew Jack did. I mean, he showed us yeah. his hand in Texas before the Olympia, and it was, you know, a lot further out. This guy, uh, uh, Samson, is, is even closer – to his Olympia form than Andrew was when he competed in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think there's any provision and barring a disaster, which again, anything can happen. We, we, we gotta, we gotta go with what we see and what we think is going to happen that those four are going to occupy the top four spots in some order. I think that's yeah. fairly well established where it gets real interesting is the next four spots, because you've got Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada, uh, Martin Fitzwater and Brandon Curry. Now, oh, yeah. I got to throw another name in there, which is Muhammad Fuda, because he's really kind of come up this year, and the kid ain't missing much. He's a good young talent, a lot of muscle. If he comes in condition, he could put his name in there. Um, but that would be your next crew, all fighting for those spots. But you can't talk about Nick after the New York Pro without putting Fitzwater in that conversation, Sean. 100%. Mm -hmm. Nick, Nick uh, got exposed to a degree with Fitzwater, um, because uh, arguably Fitzwater took him out and it, it just didn't go his way. But um, that did show that, you know, Nick had some work to do. And that work is going to 
have to reveal itself on that Olympia stage. That was a that was a ways away from the Olympia. So we didn't see the best Nick Walker. He's bought himself some time. Uh, it, it could have been a, a total anomaly that that Fitzwater hit his peak. Can he do it again? And, and is there any room for him to to actually improve where we know we've seen Nick do the same thing before? That wasn't Nick's first time winning the New York Pro. Remember, he won the New York Pro, I think, in Tampa, didn't he? That one year? Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so he can still show up and, and do some damage. I mean, some of the guys were trying to give me flack because I said he had to overcome this hamstring injury. It still looms large. Injury closer to the show is actually more probable than when you're yep. far from the show because you're just trying to do so much with so little time that you make yourself vulnerable. I'm, I'm hoping that the guy makes it through uh, all the way through to the end, but he's going to have to make sure that he holds off Nick, uh, holds off Hunter Labrada uh, to keep his status in this game. Um, and uh, for Nick, a, a victory for Nick, I think is coming back and trying to reclaim at least fourth place. Anything short of fourth place for yeah. Nick Walker uh, is a setback because uh, he's got a lot to prove that, He's got youth over Andrew Jack um, and that he could hold off a, a fast charging Hunter Labrada to stay in that elite group of guys. I know Nick says he's going to be the next Mr. Olympia. I don't blame him. Hell, I used to say the same thing. I mean, he <laughs> stands right. a shot. You know, all, all kind of crap can go wrong. Listen, right now, you know, I think that Hadi Chupin has a lot on his plate. You know, Israel just attacked Iran and Iran's planning on attacking back. You don't think this guy's on the phone with all of his family and his <laughs> fam right. his wife and kids and his mind is all over the place. I know he's here. He's in Texas, but he's coming in fighting an uphill battle because what is he going to go home to when the Olympia is over? Um, yeah. And the pressure right now that Derek uh, Lunsford has on him, a new father, um, he doesn't want to lose that title. He's just he's just barely getting used to being Mr. Olympia. When that goes away, you know, the mystique is gone. That that one year reign, it, it went quick. And if he can't hang on to it, he's just going to be another bodybuilder that's trying to compete next year. And uh Samson, you know, Samson dumped his trainer. He's put all his faith in his wife. He won a competition. He's got a lot of people that he's trying to silence come this Mr. Olympia competition. And Andrew Jack, he stepped over a hundred thousand dollars to make twenty thousand dollars. I mean, he's got to make up for that lost revenue and make sure that everybody realized he made the right strategic play by doing Texas and not doing the Dubai pro show and that he deserves to be in that top three, not top four. So there's so many moving parts on that Olympia stage. The question is going to be the odd man out like Brett, Brett Wilkins. I think it's Brett or is it Brett? Brett. Brett, he just, no, Brett Wilkins is, he's not in this year. Who, who just won the Reno show? Brett Wilkins, but he qualified for next year. He's for not competing year. this year in the Olympia. Uh, Okay, yeah, he, he he's uh, he has to hold out. But the other guys that are qualified, what's going through their heads? You know, your 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 one guy is not going to be able to make it from from uh, from Iran. Uh, yeah, that, that really sucks because Beirut would have been a guy that I would have had possibly, you know, certainly in that first call out. But he could have been a guy to kick somebody out of there real quick. But he can't make it over to the state, so so he's out of the the equation. But um, Hunter is an anomaly. He, he's made improvements, but it, it was at a cost. And I think, it, which is his waistline from what I can see uh, from Italy, if he can bring that down, I think he can be, he can still be in that mix. He has beaten Nick before, but I think all eyes have got to be on uh, uh, three guys, uh, Brandon Curry, who you can't count out yet. The only guy, the only other uh, Olympian up there other than the other two guys. Um, question is, is he more towards the end of his career? I think the answer is, is yes. Does That's he still have enough gas in the tank? Fitzwater, absolutely. And again, Muhammad Fuda, that's not a name a lot of people know, but a great dark horse pick to, to, to again, boot somebody out of that, you know, maybe sneak into a fifth or a sixth. Well, I was going to say, we're, we're, we're talking about Brandon Curry, is if this could be the swan song for him, because all of these names we're talking about, these aren't fly-by-night bodybuilders. These guys are here to stay. So Brandon Curry can't knock in and penetrate that. Uh, yeah. Brandon Curry, we're no longer talking about him. And then, you know, you find your way off the stage and William Bonick, who got a little bit of gas into his tank, um, he's another guy that this may be the last time we actually see him uh, on that Olympia stage. So, you know, Brandon's got a lot going on and, and trying to figure it all out because I think he left his trainer as well. Uh, this we're Some of these bodybuilders are at a crossroads when it comes to this year's Mr. Olympia, which will shape the rest of their career. Some of these guys we will probably never see again on an Olympia stage.
Well, Brent, uh, uh, Bonac said he was going to retire, so I'll take him at his word. You, you know, maybe not a bad time to go out. I still think he, he can eke in there into a top 10 finish, especially with uh, Tony O'Burton uh, out of the mix. So, um, William yeah. is still impressive enough. He, you know, maybe he'll go out in Dexter Jackson style in the ninth place. I can see that. Uh, Rafael Brando, again, not a, not a big name, but a guy who's continued to make improvements. He's, he's uh, very complete, very good bodybuilder. He's just been adding size. And uh, Akeem Williams, again, not a name that rolls off people's tongues when you're talking about the top six guys, but he did sneak in there a few years back. Akeem Williams from the side can literally hang with any bodybuilder on that stage. And I'm talking from Mr. Olympia on down. It's merely when he turns around and at back, you know, that that's where he tends to suffer. He's kind of got that, uh, you know, Lionel Bayecki thing going on there where he's just soft from the back and missing some stuff. Look at that shot right there. That's as much muscle as I've ever seen on any human being on an Olympia stage. Yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Olympia's are one from the back, and this is where he loses a lot of traction. Um, it, you know, what's great about the Olympia is you can see some things on certain bodybuilders and just go, wow, holy crap, right? But when it comes to the sum total, um, the guy that wins is not not necessarily the most impressive wow factor. He's just the most right. complete. He's more complete yeah. or he's more conditioned than the other guys, and so – while Akeem brings a lot of wow factor poses, the sum total doesn't always add up. And so then he's just another body on the stage. But when we get into that top six, there's some careers that are going to be defined here. Of course, William Bonick may be on his way out. Brandon Curry, if you're not in that top six, we're we talking about potentially on the way out. Um, and then on the way in, of course, are we welcoming back Nick Walker? Or is Nick Walker uh, going to bomb? I mean, it could happen. Everybody keeps talking about this kid, but we've seen people fall right on their face before uh, coming off of a, a return of an injury. We just don't, nothing is guaranteed when it comes down to this Mr. Well, the, contest. The, the problem with the Nick Walker continues to be the same thing. He's got as much muscle as anybody. We've already established that day. He's a freak. All right. He, he gets in great conditioning. Uh, uh, he'll, his conditioning will be amongst the best on the Olympia stage. The biggest setback he's got, the biggest problem is his structure. Yeah, and like you one. said, Sean, the new guys that have come in, all have superior structure to him. Bitswater has better structure. Hunter has better structure. Muhammad Fuda has better structure. Andrew Jack has better structure. So the problem he's going to find is that is that just purely in the symmetry department, uh, shape, uh, uh, you know, shape, symmetry, proportions, that type of things. He's already got his work cut out for him, but he does seem to make up with it, kind of like a Richie Gasperi years ago, and, and uh, yeah, Branch Warren after him. So hard work can prevail but he's going to need a little bit of help from those other guys, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there's a lot more questions <laughs> that we're creating that are going to have to be answered, and the only way they can be answered is when he's standing next to him because uh, Nick is probably the most confident bodybuilder there is on that stage. He does not concede anything to these other guys, and a lot of those guys he's beaten before. Um, yep. I do think he needs to make a correction with the paint, body paint because – Painting his body and not his face, it just doesn't look right. He's got to get that fixed. It's just two different things yeah. we're looking at, like kind of like the Halloween character uh, with that mask. He's got to put some color on his face. Um, but, again, I think the main thing that Nick has to do to be competitive is bring that rock-hard condition, um, not worry about who he's standing next to, bring that confidence, bring that swagger, what we're seeing right there, because we saw it work. For Mike Matarazzo to get noticed, we saw Branch Warren prance yep. around that stage. Uh, if he doesn't concede any ground on that stage, it may attract the eyes of the judges, where some of these guys become shrinking violence, very unsure of where they're at. You know, Brandon Curry doesn't have that dominating stage presence, even though he's a former Olympia. He doesn't command the attention of the judges. Nick, for some reason, you can look at those physiques, but sometimes you keep being drawn back to Nick and the attitude he displays on the stage. I think it works. Well, for him. I mean. Let me say this, uh, um, you know, even though we, you know, listen, we're not Nick haters, by the way, everybody out there, okay, just because we don't pick him to win <laughs> doesn't mean we don't like the guy, okay? He's a good kid. He's a great talent. I am so happy that, uh, you know, God willing, he will be back on the Olympia stage this year because he was sitting literally down in front of me last year when he had that horrific hamstring injury, and he was literally uh, out of the Olympia before you knew it, and I felt so bad for him because that's not a good position for anybody. I mean, I mean listen, whether we got him in first, second, or last – um, you hate to see that unfold. So I'm just glad he's going to be back on the Olympia stage where he belongs fighting this out. I tell you what, if I'm Martin Fitzwater 
And I just saw Martin because him and Brett Wilkin are, are uh, training partners and best of friends. They, they've been helping each other, uh, you know, with their preps. So, uh, but with what Fitzwater brought in New York and really, I think, brought him, elevated himself. It's not so much that he exposed Nick. We, we, we know what we got with Nick. I think he elevated his own self up there where people said, you know what, this kid's actually a little bit better than I thought he was. And, uh, yeah. you know, you got to give consideration. If you can hang with Nick uh, Walker, and not only did he hang with him, but arguably a lot of people had him winning, then you have to put yourself into the mix of that conversation. Again, I don't think he can get in that top four, but you have to be in the mix of a fifth or a sixth. Agree, Sean? Well, he'll be standing next to Hunter Labrada. He can serve notice to Hunter. Uh, he can give William Bonnet the what for, uh, and he can also uh, fight it out with Brandon Curry. He's he's in that conversation. It's going to be a conditioning thing for him because those are pretty big names that he'd have yep. to get through in order to be in the same company as Nick on the Olympia stage. So if we're talking about Nick and and him being all that, we got to we got to drag this kid right into that conversation. But he's going to have to be some quality bodybuilders besides Nick in order to get the validation that he deserves. Yeah. Well, I think the difference with Fitzwater is he's he doesn't have that freak factor like you see in a Nick, but he has the shape, like that tiny waist, you know, for, for that muscular frame. I think that's what's going to give him a bit of an edge. Um, but, you know, I'd love to see him keep that waist and yeah. still bring in a bit more up top. And, and in the legs, of course. To, well, he's got a like very... You could have his waist on Nick Walker, you'd, you'd be talking a different story. He has a very natural looking physique. Can I say that? He has yeah. a very natural looking physique, which makes him look a little bit softer, but he's he's streamlined. He's got the shape. That's the thing that I think carried him into that conversation with uh, Nick Walker. He's got prettier shape. So he needs to yeah. stay close to Nick because he can expose Nick with his shape. Um, but he's going to have to bring harder conditioning because that's where Nick kind of has it over him. Uh, because of Nick's vascularity, it just looks raw, like rugged. So um, I, I think Fitzwater will be noticed uh, if he brings the shape and the condition. You know, what, what's interesting is, you know, we throw these terms around like freak factor, right? At the Mr. Olympia competition in particular, the word freak factor should be so down on the list, if not even not on the list, because you're literally <laughs> looking for the best physique in the world, top to bottom, left to right. Right. Symmetry, shape, proportion, muscularity, uh, conditioning, presentation. Right. The word freak shouldn't even be in the mix because you're looking for the most complete bodybuilder. And Sean, like we've always said for many years, you're not looking for the guy with the most amount of strengths. You're looking for the guy with the least amount of weaknesses. And that should be a complete head to toe physique. Freak factor at this type of a show shouldn't exist, in my opinion. No, 100 percent. But then what, it, what about the thought of where. To be a Mr. Olympia, you should have a physique that not the average bodybuilder should ever be able to achieve. Yeah, but well, Andrew, listen. there's nobody on that stage that an average bodybuilder can achieve. There's Correct. No <laughs> right. I mean, true. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, there's nobody in that top 10 that we're talking about that has a non freak physique these guys are not normal bodybuilders you, right. you know what it takes to qualify for the olympia you got to beat some pretty good physique so i don't think anybody's on that olympia stage that um in my book is not a freak even fitzwater's a freak by comparison to some of these sure. guys that are trying to get there um and he is he got he's he, he's got to stay next to nick if he can i don't know you know you could you pick out the numbers and you're standing where you're standing but remember, this is his first time at the dance, right? So I think, I, I think, I think Nick has the advantage of experience. Some guys, well, are, well, some guys are not ready for the occasion, and they miss it altogether because they're just in awe that they're there. You know how many times have we heard a bodybuilder say, "Well, I'm just happy to be here. You know, it's my first time, and and I learned a lot of things." No, you got to go in there like you already won the show. Like Nick's gonna have that attitude. Oh yeah. Well, listen. Uh, Let's make let's make no mistake about it. Yeah, like Sean says, the worst Olympian is pretty damn good. You know, we're comparing the best of the best. And listen, there's names out there that are impressive bodybuilders that we won't we're not even bringing up in discussion because we tend to focus on the top ten. But guys like John Delarosa, John Jewett, uh, uh, you know Nathan. Obviously, we know he can't get over here, but again, he did qualify. Uh, again, Tonio, we know he's out, but again, another outstanding physique. Theo Legulay, again, not a name that everybody knows, but again, a damn good bodybuilder. 
these are guys that we're, we're forecasting that would be probably in that, you know, bottom half of the Olympia, you know, fighting for the, trying to get to that top 10. But make no mistake, th these are outstanding uh, uh, guys, individuals that have earned their way to that Olympia stage. But when you're standing as good as the John De La Rosa is, as you see here, uh, and he was very impressive in, in his comeback and his wins. You know, he's going to stand next to guys like Brandon and Raphael and and uh, Akeem Williams and these guys. And and the whole game changes. It's much yeah. like with the when you're at the Nationals mm -hmm. and you see the lightweight and the middleweight guy and you go, man, this guy looks good. I can't wait to see him in the overall. And then they come out for the <laughs> overall and your <laughs> eyes go right to the right side of the stage <laughs> with the light, heavy, heavy and super heavyweight guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, I mean, Sean, how many how many middleweights have we seen win a national or a USA title in all our years? Yeah, and well, and at the end of the day, then they're gone when they get to the pros, right? Because they just yeah, they couldn't cut the mustard. You have some anomalies, right? We had Muhammad uh, Beniziza, we had Lila Lila Prada, we had Muhammad McAwe. Yeah, um, you have some guys that can make it through there, uh, but it's been a long time. Francis Benfato, it's been a long time since we've seen that. And I don't, I don't even think this lineup presents that. We don't have any of those types no. of athletes in this lineup at all. So that well, listen, uh, uh, well, John Jewett to his credit. Now, for those who say, you know, if you got your naysayers out there, think, well, you know, we don't need this two twelve. We should just get rid of it. And the, you know, Hottie's a two twelve. Uh, you know, Derek was a two twelve. Well, first of all, yes, they were two twelves a long time ago, and like in Derek's case, a lot of pounds ago of muscle. Okay, yeah. John Jewett is is a bumped up two twelve who's done. Pretty damn good in his own right, you know, in the immense open. But he's more of a true 212. Watch the difference if you put John Jewett next to next to Derek Lunsford, okay? Exactly. There's your difference in a 212 guy who's traditionally a 212 guy uh, versus a, a Derek Lunsford or, or anybody else for that matter. Listen, Derek Lunsford right now could make a 212 if he chopped his right leg off. No, I think he's pushing yeah. 235, 240 easy. And he's made yeah. – and let me tell you, he's made improvements. You want to see a, an early prediction. I'm going to say that you're going to see a Derek Lunsford who's probably, I'll just take a stab, 15% better than last year. You want to see a freak uh, because now he's had two years to grow into it. Yes, he was at 212, and then he supersized it. But we've only seen him in really in one competition, and that, of course, is this uh, past Olympia. Um, he's had now a whole year to train into that body. And some of the video I've seen, I mean – you talk about a freak, like as we're talking, but he's still got that small waist and all that. I think Derek yeah. uh, uh, Lunsford's going to separate himself from the pack this year. I really do. Well, it's funny because you know I was just I I was thinking the same thing about Hottie. I mean, Hottie showed some videos out there that I'm going, oh, is this, how is he getting better as he's getting older? But then I remember Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie right. Coleman got better in his late 30s, right? Like he was right. in his 40s yeah. when he started to come up, come of age. Yes, Derek is maturing at the right time. He's probably handling the kind of weights that he should have been handling a long time ago. Remember, Bob, I told this guy to go in the open category literally right after he won the USA. Yeah, that's two, right. Skip the 212 altogether. He just didn't have the mindset for it at the time. But when he arrived in the open category, all he did was walk in there and get first runner up. Um, Hadi Chupin, I have the feeling that this guy feels like he lost more than just the Olympic title. And he's yeah. got to get it back. And, you know, I don't know – what it's like to have the weight and support of your country behind you. <laughs> but do you know how many people came out uh, when this guy got set? He just got second place. And you would have thought that we, we robbed him of everything that he ever had in his life. <laughs> I know, right? He's got an entire country pushing for him. And he knows what it was like to be Mr. Olympia. And I got to believe that, you know what, based on his videos and the weight that he's pushing, we might see the best hottest humans. So this is the kind of rubber match we want to see. The, yeah, Derek well, is I'm arriving sure at the right time in terms of his age. Hottie Chupin is fighting for something that he once had. He knows what it was worth. He knows what it meant to his country. I mean, and we've got the Nigerians coming. Man, this is going to be a crazy one. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> this is well, why I fell in love we were all there. We were all there in Columbus when he, Hottie came in and he made a statement claiming that Arnold title. Like, yeah. there, were, there was no denying he was walking away with that win. That. That, that yeah. and, I, and I think you're going to see something even even – I don't know, bigger, better than than we saw in Ohio a few months back. So that was the Arnold title in Ohio and in England. So in, yeah, yeah. Hottie would be running the table if he pulls this one off, and I think that would take his earnings uh, up over a million dollars, which would be a record for any bodybuilder with the with yeah. both Arnold and the Olympia. That's that's some kind of a record financially. 
Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Uh, you know, once again, we, we, we look at this uh, footage right here. And the only thing I can think of is if, if Samson was could if Samson was even close to them in conditioning, he would be Mr. Olympia. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at all, that. All of, these, uh, all of these questions will be answered October the 12th at the Resorts World in Las Vegas. And Bob, the only way that you can see this show since it's sold out is how? Well, you got two ways, actually, this year. Um, so the innovators at the Olympia team have put together a watch party. So it's right there at the Zook Theater uh, at Resorts World. So you could literally just pay a small fee there and uh, get yourself in. I don't know what the setup is after that, but they will have the Olympia setup uh, right there on the big screen, piped right in. So you actually be able to hear me on the stage. You know, you'll hear Big Steve uh, making the call outs. Uh, so that's very cool. They've never done that before, but given that it's in a theater, with limited seating, um, they thought it was, uh, you know, good to put a, you know, a little something out there for those who can't get there. And the other way you can see it is pay-per-view. Of course, all the pay-per-view information is out on the Olympia site, uh, MrOlympia.com. So this is one that you're not going to not want to miss, everybody. Joe Weider's 60th, Sean. Like I said, we are celebrating this with our own birthdays uh, this year. So um, history will be made once again, my friend, on the Olympia stage. Absolutely. Looking forward to sharing that history with you, Muscle Insider, Mutant, and the whole muscle building world out there. My thirty. This is my 38th Olympia. Jeez, that's crazy. <laughs> Damn, you're old. I'm not even 38 years old. No, it's kidding. nuts. <laughs> exciting. No, it's going to be exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, there's still so much to, to learn and talk about, but... Uh, this is going to be a, a really exciting event. I, I can't wait to see, like, I know talking to Jim with Mutant, they've got some, some crazy stuff that they're planning for this year. Including um, the new apparel. You know Dan, yeah, they just launched the new apparel. And I know Dan with the Olympia team, they've got some some special stuff happening for us, I'm sure. So, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys right. there in a week, next week. Yeah. It we started, just just a, week just a reminder, it starts on Tuesday. Tuesday with <laughs> amateurs, right? It's, it's bananas. Yeah. And then they actually have, uh, Bob, the the press conference and a few other things are actually taking place at Resorts World, not at the Expo. Right. Uh, yeah, we've got, uh, the, we got, we got the press conference. Know. We've got the Meet the Olympians Thursday night. And then, of course, all the action starts uh, Friday morning uh, at the convention center with the uh, stage there uh, that uh, many of the categories will be on. And then it's, Pretty much a repeat after that. Uh, Friday morning pre-judging, Friday night finals, Saturday morning pre-judging, Saturday night finals, and then, of course, Sunday, the Superstar Seminar on Sunday. Don't miss that one, folks. Always a great yeah. chance to hear from your Olympians. And uh, uh, this is going to be a good one. It's going to be one for the ages, that's for sure. Uh, oh, interestingly, Sean, yeah. because uh, you've been to a whole bunch of these, but we will have celebrated the 40th, 50th, and now the 60th Olympia together. Yeah, wow. it's bananas. And I believe that 50th Olympia – Phil Heath got the golden Sandow trophy. Is That's, there a different uh, one this year for the 50 No, years? from what I years? know, so there's only, there's three different Sandows. There's a traditional Sandow. 77. There was the 50th, yeah. which was gold, which was which was pretty cool. Um, and then they they supersized it. So they kind of upgraded it to a bigger version. It's got all the names of the uh, winners on it. So uh, Phil Heath has got, and will always be the only Olympian to have all three in his collection. Crazy. Huh. I know, ain't that crazy? Yeah. But uh, it's like it's like it was just yesterday that we were celebrating the fiftieth. I can't believe ten years has passed. Like, yeah. like I can close my eyes, and it was a couple of years ago uh, watching Phil win that that fiftieth with that gold sandow. So unbelievable. Well, which is another reason why I I make it a point to come to these shows. I did a podcast earlier. The Olympia is more than just an actual contest. I mean, this is where you know, Bob. I met you when I was eighteen, nineteen years old. You know, the Olympia has mm -hmm. kind of kept our friendship alive and. Younger, and bro. Of <laughs> course, we're, we're, we're newly acquainted, but at the same time, it, it's been a couple of years, and it goes so fast. And when you put it in the context of looking at the calendar for the Olympia, I mean, I've seen kids born that are now men and, and, and women that have children at these shows. I think of the history and the nostalgia of all of those guys that are no longer with us, Peter McGough, Bill Riddles, yeah. um, uh, Sergio Oliva, Larry Scott. I mean, there's so many people. More recently, Cedric McMillan and Sean. Well, bro, Rogan. the the vice listen, the vice president of the company is Tyler Mania. Yeah, they passed yeah. the torch <laughs> on to this kid 
who's a grown <laughs> man. Uh, he's getting married this year. I think he's getting married this year. Isn't he? I, he's thirty. I know he just turned thirty, yeah. and uh, yeah, he's got. You know, he's he's got the world at his fingertips. Yeah. He's done a great job. And but, but to your point, yeah, we have seen, you know, kids become men. We we've seen we've seen, uh, you know, friends of ours, you know, and their kids, including our own, who are now graduating. Your, your daughter's a singing sensation now. Yeah. Where she gets that talent from, I have no idea. But it, Bob, it ain't from your side. I remember Bob passing the microphone off to you. You've been doing it now for fifteen years. I remember Dan. Doing the play-by-play -play with me backstage. He's now yeah, yeah, in the yeah. competition. Um, and, of course, Jake Wood, who just was in love with women's bodybuilding, has now taken over the entire uh, Olympia production. Look at, that, look at that footage right there. Now, there's talk, There's yeah. a guy who should have won a sand out. <laughs> and there, there I am in the shadow, 1996, oh, man. man. We had some great, great memories. And, of course, I, I go on record now, Dorian will not be there. He actually is going to be having hip replacement surgery during oh boy the week. new parts yeah during the week of the olympia i was asking him i said out of all the days to have surgery you chose the olympia weekend um yes. well the time doesn't wait for anyone his hips been bothering him for quite some time he's finally going to get that taken care of and he's on to the next chapter of life as well so he's going to be one of the guys that will not actually be there so what what year is this we're looking at sean chicago 1996 uh, that's believe the year that uh Nasser actually failed the diuretic test that, that year. And Kevin moved up from fourth place to third place. He never did get the third place medallion or the, the prize money. So Lavroni hmm. was a little bit <laughs> perturbed that Nasser kept the prize. No, Nasser, <laughs> I think Nasser actually did get his prize money and the medal. He just never gave it back. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that was a good nice. time in Chicago. That yeah, was, uh, yeah. That's a lifetime ago, man. And by the way. When we say a lifetime ago, 1996 was, is that 28 years ago? I mean, that's, yeah. it's bananas yeah, that's right. how, how fast the time has gone. So I'm just happy to be here celebrating the 60 years because there's a lot of guys that we came up with in the game that aren't Sean Perrine being one of them, right? And, yeah, yeah, good uh, friend Sean Perrine. And, uh, and yeah, you know, we've lost a whole bunch along the way. And so it's kind of sad in a way. But for those that are, for us that are still here, Sean, I can't, uh, I can't wait to get there, brother. It's gonna be a, well, it's gonna be a barn burner. That's the whole thing. When I'm at that Olympic weekend, I think of those guys. I think of Robert Kennedy and the guys that aren't there. That's where they really come back into focus because those are personalities that were larger than life that were actually there to help help shape and form the Olympia weekend. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring us, but uh, there's no place to be than Las Vegas come next weekend. Well, I just That's saw. Right. Speaking of which, I just saw JM at at the uh, Legion. Him and, and Debbie were covering it. Um, he is, he has actually been to all, but, oh, geez, only a handful. Like uh, he was, it's like his 47th Olympia or something like that. Yeah. His father, Jim Mannion, of course, has, he has seen all of them except five. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. And, and obviously being, being involved as he has, uh, you know, Jim still, uh, you know, was, was a hell of a, co uh, a coach. I was going to say a hell of a uh, judge back in his day, you know, before he took, you know, took and everything to different heights, but. Still the yeah. only guy that had Danny Padilla winning and, and uh, Padilla winning rightfully in 1981. So I'll always give him always give him credit for that one, Jimmy. You, you, you're the only one that had it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you guys next week in Las Vegas. Definitely. I can't wait for it either. Thanks so much, you guys. And uh, hopefully we can do this again pretty soon. If not, we'll do it in Vegas and uh, we'll all get together there. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll uh, catch you guys soon. Have a good one. All right.